Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is Speedplay Togert Episode 2. We left off in a really good position. Most of North Africa has high relations with us, with the exception being Morocco, but that isn't really surprising seeing as we did declare war on them. The Mamluks won't ally us, but they will royal marry us, and that opens the door for an alliance once our diplomat gets back. Internally, we have high war exhaustion, so we're just going to use diplomatic power to lower that, as we don't really have the ability to fight off rebels. With our diplomat back, we can ally the Mamluks, and that means we're allied to all of our direct neighbors. Which is great news, we don't have to worry about the AI attacking us, we can just look for opportunities, such as Telemkin getting invaded by Portugal. So we'll fabricate a claim on their lands, and from there, just try to get the diplomatic situation more on our side before we declare war. Unfortunately, the Mamluks view us defensively, so they won't fight an offensive war on our side. And by the looks of it, Tlemkin is allied to Morocco, so we will improve relations with them. That, mixed with the fact that Morocco is doing poorly in their current war, will hopefully mean that they will ignore Tlemkin's call to arms. Tlemkin and Morocco are only allied to one another, so without Morocco, Tlemkin will be alone, and we have a pretty solid chance at this. Internally, we still have a couple heretical provinces which have high revolt risk, but we'll eventually increase piety and convert them. We just have to worry about Tlemkin being alone in this war. With the Cassus Belly done, hopefully we will be able to get Morocco out of their camp and into our own. They will not join the war, so that is fantastic news, and they have allied us, and they were forced to cancel their alliance in the peace deal. So with that, we declare war and move forward. We're not going to fight their armies alone, however. We will, though, since Tunis did join, we will bring our army back, attach Tunis's army to our own, and fight Tlemkin's army together. We stack wipe them, which is fantastic. Now I begin the process of attempting to carpet siege their provinces, despite not actually having enough forces to do so. I do, however, manage to get one siege to actually begin progressing. However, at the moment, I leave these two sieges not actually working. Even worse, I leave the armies vulnerable because with only a single regiment in each group, newly spawned Tlemkin forces are able to just beat them in battles. So I have to keep using the 11 stack of combined forces to fight their armies, and I keep forgetting to actually move those two northern armies into a single stack so they can actually begin their siege. It takes me a depressingly long amount of time to actually do that. However, I'm pretty much saved by the fact that Telemkin has run out of money, and due to that, they really can't stop me or take advantage of the mistakes that I've made. And pretty quickly the war devolves into me just sieging out the remaining provinces, much as I had planned to do in the very early stage of the war. So with that more or less taken care of, it's a matter of the peace deal. Now there is some merit to just making them release a country or two, and then vassalizing it on my own which would save a few points perhaps, although I just decide to fully annex them and release whatever vassals I choose to from the remains. Now I immediately lower the war exhaustion so coring will be cheaper and try to just core all of their provinces, however I don't have the points for that. So I core the most expensive, leaving Figig and Castir. Morocco breaks the alliance, but that works fantastically because Figig is a core of Talifat and Talifat has cores on a lot of Moroccan provinces. You see, I'm uh, raising the local autonomy because, quite frankly, I can't deal with a revolt, and here I am checking that Talifat has those cores, releasing it, and selling to Talifat the one other province I didn't have the points to core. So just like that, I took care of the coring issue, don't have to worry about revolts, and we have a Cassis Belly on Morocco. Morocco, who's dealing with revolts, has no allies, and just got out of a, debil a debilitating war with Portugal. So, in a rather rash move, I immediately declare war on Morocco for Talifat's cores. Luckily, Tunis joins the war on our side, so we don't really have to worry about being overwhelmed, even by a weakened Morocco. Although, in what doesn't actually very much bode well, the Moroccans get a rather large force and begin sieging Figyig. Luckily, the combined Tunisian and our forces are significantly large, 
Unfortunately, the Moroccans have Pretender Rebels, which is probably the most unfortunate series of rebels they could be having. As Pretender Rebels, once they enforce their demands, join the army of the country they enforce their demands on. So I launch a couple hit-and-run strikes on Moroccan forces in an attempt to do what I did against Telemkin, where I just destroy the forces that build up and let them weaken themselves. Unfortunately, they take the opportunity to stack wipe one of my forces. Luckily, I win a subsequent battle and chase their army down. And here's a moment where I also make another questionable sort of choice and begin just following their forces. Luckily, I don't overcommit. I try to maintain at least one siege, and here you see I try to defeat their rebels. Unfortunately, I lose the siege and the battle against their rebels. I get the forces back together and try to move back onto the field in order to get at least some sort of level of control over the area and to move the battlefield back into their country so I don't have to fight in the lands that I'm coring or in my vassal's lands. And it works somewhat. We win a couple battles and chase their armies down, stack wiping them, however they keep creating new armies, which is a rather significant problem, especially if you're trying to destroy all their armies before sieging them out. Now you'll notice that I'm winning the battles, but I have to chase their armies across the country, and while this happens, their rebels manage to defeat my armies as well. So I begin spending all of my money and taking loans to just raise more and more forces to keep up a presence on this battlefield. It, I would be lying if I said this was the ideal way for this war to be going. However, we have one of their provinces sieged out. The rebels, while doing quite a lot, aren't about to break their country. We are winning the battles still, at least most of them. However, our allied armies are now no longer actually actively supporting us, but sieging their provinces. And this is kind of a mixed blessing. While we don't have their support in the battles, we don't appear to actually need it at the moment. We have enough mercenaries that it kind of works itself out and they're actually progressing their sieges, something that I'm not taking care of on my own. So realistically, that probably saved the war effort, as I made quite a few mistakes with this. Luckily, we managed to continue winning battles, and we've sieged out the vast majority of their country. We lost that battle, however, at this point, we have enough of a controlling position, and our armies are close enough together that they can support one another, and individual forces are able to defeat individual enemy forces. At least, sometimes. We get a call to arms from the Mamluks, but we turn that down because we are pretty bogged down in this conflict. And you notice that the rebel army has become a Moroccan army. Luckily, we managed to use some pretty quick maneuvers to win the battle, and eventually, we defeat their army and chase it down as we've been chasing all of their other armies, successfully stack wiping it. Now, if you'll notice the date, it's been quite a while since the war started, as this war... Basically, we made the same mistakes as in the Talimkin campaign, however, against a foe which was actually in a much stronger position and able to take advantage more of the mistakes that I made. It, it wasn't ideal, however, the war still was won. I ended up taking over about nine loans which is going to set me back quite a bit. However, the loans were worth it. Ultimately, the war is almost certainly won. We did lose a battle just now. However, it's basically done. We can just move our one army back and forth and siege out the rest of their provinces. They can't get any more forces in the field, and they proved that they were a threatening nation with how much of a fight they put up, so it was good that we took this opportunity to defeat them early. I give Talifat all their cores back, plus an extra province, but more importantly, we took the last province needed to get a border with Portugal, which we can soon use to westernize off of once we core the province and get seven techs behind. However, we still haven't actually gotten any techs at all this game, so that's not going to be too long. You see, I paid back the first loan, and other than converting a few provinces and building that core, that's basically loans and integrating Talifat, which we just started, is going to be the order of the day for the near future. So that's pretty much why the game is going to be sped up at around 16 times speed for basically the end of this video. We also have one little thing to deal with, and that's keeping Talifat docile. 
They're at 48% uh, independence desire, and every once in a while their army grows just enough to push it over 50%. Every time that happens, I build an extra army just to delay that. I don't want to even begin to risk that they will launch a war for their independence and undo all of the work we've done to annex and integrate them. And meanwhile, we're in a very long Regency Council, which is a bit unfortunate. We took a mission to build a navy, so we build a small trade fleet, which I believe I will just ignore. We also just began westernization, and we completed the mission for our fleet. So, westernization, we are in a fairly good spot. Admittedly, we lost that battle, but Tunis came in and helped. And I believe we just got our new king who is a 442 and a new heir which is a 132 who will hopefully keep off the throne. However, we're in a pretty good spot now. The uh, westernization is going relatively peacefully. We've increased the provincial autonomy in every province we've taken over, so we don't really have to worry about any actual large-scale popular revolts. We are draining our Diplo points very quickly, though, because we're both integrating a country and westernizing simultaneously, but we just fixed that by finishing our integration of Talifat. We also now begin to fabricate a claim on the Mamluks, and in a moment we'll do the same against Morocco as well. The idea isn't so much that we're going to definitely go to war with one or both of these countries, so much as I don't want to be in a position where I have no casus belly and can't take advantage of any situation that comes up. However, we've just finished our westernization, so we'll start to get admin, diplo, and military points again, so in the near future we could very well go to war. The Ottomans are our ally, as well as Tunis, so we're in a good situation diplomatically. Thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe. Togert will go even further.